Welcome to Majestic Major, a model aircraft project. This is part 10, making an improved Bowden cable assembly to operate the throttle, as the previous one was weak, plus mounting the engine and making a plug for the end of the fuel tank vent pipe. Although it's not on the list, I painted the undercarriage using the same hammerite blue paint that I used to paint my smart and brown lathe, and I think it looks much better. It's closer to the fuselage in colour. On screen at the moment is the wooden block assembly which supports the Bowden cable at the end near the servos. This is after I painted the wooden part that I made in the last episode. It's currently stuck on a paintbrush in the vise. I made a big mistake when I made this part. This is the part after the paint dried and I snapped it in half, not using any tools other than my fingers, and it broke really easily. It wasn't an accident, I did this on purpose to show the fact that I got the grain direction completely wrong. The grain on this piece of mahogany runs from left to right or right to left. This makes the part weak, so I just made another one and this time I got the grain in the right direction. Because I work with metal most of the time, I forget about the grain aspect when working with wood. So anyway, I made a new part and I altered the design a little bit because I wasn't happy with where the Bowden cable was fitting on the first one. And just like on the first one, I drilled it underneath to take two dowels. Then I glued the dowels in position using super glue and a small hammer. With the dowels firmly stuck in place in the mahogany, I used my belt sander to clean up the bottom part. Then to make the part look something, I rounded it off like this. All I have to do now is drill a hole for the Bowden cable. I'm much happier with the part this time, it's far stronger than the previous one. And even though this part is not under a great deal of mechanical stress, I just felt it was completely wrong. I like to do things properly. But in this episode, I'm going to do something else wrong. Frequently in my videos, I like to do things wrong, just to show people what happens or what can happen when you do it wrong. In this clip, I'm using my Boxford lathe and a knurling tool to cut a knurl on the end of a piece of brass. I've covered knurling in one of the Model Engineering for Beginners episodes. Knurling is not difficult. This knurling tool uses side pressure to cut the knurl in the metal. But for this knurling to be effective, particularly in soft metals, you need to use the knurling tool very close to the chuck. Here I'm sort of compromising because I'm making a very small part. And really, I should be using an ordinary tool, but instead I'm using a parting tool and cutting the wrong end. What I should have done is knurled more of the brass, then turn the diameter to fit in the pipe that it's going to block using a standard tool going from right to left. But for the part that I'm making, which is completely freehand, it's not to any specific size, making the component in the wrong sequential order seems to be successful, but this is not always the case. Once I'd finished turning the diameter of the brass to the size that I wanted it to be to fit into the silicone rubber tubing, before parting it off, I just cleaned up the end of the knurl, and as you can see, the knurl has been cleaned up at both ends, because the edges can be very sharp. I finished off the job using a file. Use your health and safety warning when filing in the lathe, make sure your file has a substantial handle, and keep it clear of the chuck. Here, I'm parting off the finished plug. Once I'd finished the parting off operation, I took it into the outer part of the workshop, cleaned up the end on the belt sander, and polished it. This clip shows the vent pipe from the tank, which sticks out of the bottom of the aeroplane. Once I'd finished filling the tank, I used this small brass plug to seal the end of the vent pipe. The pipe that I used to fill the tank is then fitted onto the pressure nipple on the exhaust of the engine. I marked and drilled the pilot holes using an old servo tray. Now it's time to remove that in readiness for fitting the proper one. Now you see it, and now you don't. Here you can see the controls for the rudder and the elevator. Two steel cables operate the rudder, and the push rod operates the elevator. The two wires are called a closed loop system, and when adjusted correctly, give very positive control. The push rod has a clevis on the other end of it, which connects to an arm underneath the elevator. This clip shows the engine fitted in place. I've actually used M4 bolts, which are a perfect fit in the holes in the engine, and I also drilled the holes in the mounting M4 to suit them. This type of model aeroplane tends to balloon because of the high lift wing section. What I mean is when you increase the throttle, the aircraft starts to climb all by itself. To counteract this, I need to put in some down thrust on the engine. 
and to do this I'm going to make two metal wedges, drill holes in the wedges that match the bolt spacings on the mounting, and once they're fitted, the front of the engine will point downwards. I built in the required right thrust in a previous episode. While I've been messing about with the engine, the paint has dried on the part that I've just made for the Bowden cable support, and here you can see the wooden support bolted into position on the servo tray using two 4BA nuts and bolts. This clip shows what it's all about. I've loosely placed the inner wire into the clevis. Very shortly I'll be soldering that in position. By very shortly I mean in the next episode. I will also be fitting the completed servo tray in place, then fitting the inner cable and soldering another clevis on the other end of the Bowden cable which operates the throttle lever on the carburettor. I will also be fitting the control arms to the servos that operate the rudder and the elevator. Before I do that though, I need to connect the servos to a radio receiver to find out where the centre point is. And that's about it for this episode. In the next one, machining the wedges for the down thrust, fitting the servo tray and the receiver, then setting up the radio control system to make it all work. That's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.